Statistics and Excel. Scatter plots with car related data. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Excel, if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet so you could start with a blank worksheet. But if you do have access to this workbook, three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, having pre-formatted cells in it so you can get right to the heart of the practice problem. Blank tab, just having the data within it so that we can practice formatting as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of the end result. We're gonna take our data, we're gonna sort our data in a table, then we're gonna be making scatter plots from the data. Now the scatter plot will typically be taking two sets of data and trying to determine whether there be a relationship between the sets of data, the independent variable typically on uh, the X or horizontal, the dependent on the Y or the vertical. We'll create the scatter plot a couple different ways. One way, we will just take the data and copy and paste it and that way it can, we can easily put in the scatter plot. And the second way, we'll try to take our full data table over here and select the cells we want for the scatter plot. We'll also do another one comparing in a similar fashion, uh, miles per gallon and acceleration and have a similar scatter plot. All right, let's go to the blank tab to get into it. Now we have a lot of data over here. So if you don't have access to this data, I believe we got this data from uh, Kaggle. So you can go into there and search for the data related to automobiles and possibly find this one there. Or you can copy the data set from here if you want to type in the data set. It's quite a long uh, data set. Or you could do your own research for data set from a, a, similar, uh, a similar set of statistics here for this type of data set. Or you could try to create the data set, although this would be a more complex one to do that with. All right, so I'm going to scroll up top. And I'm gonna delete this item. So we have our data on the left. So I pulled this data in, it's formatted nicely because it's all in a vertical table for us already. So what I would like to do is put a table around it now and, and then I can sort my data more easily. So before I do that, however, let me format the cells like I do basically every time. I'm gonna put my cursor on the triangle up top, selecting the entire sheet right click the selected area formatting the cells i usually go to currency and then i go to uh, negative numbers bracketed and red get rid of the dollar sign and then you got to look and say do i need decimals and for most of these we don't need decimals except for possibly the acceleration so what i'm going to do is take the decimals off by default and then maybe go into this column and add them back in for this particular column. And so I'm gonna say, okay, let's do that. That's my underlying format. I can then select this data set, G, the entire column. If I wanna add decimals, home tab, number, possibly add a couple, couple decimals there. So now we have it nice and number formatted. Then I'm gonna put my cursor somewhere in the table. And by the way, let's make it bold too. I'm gonna to select the entire thing again, home tab, font bold it and then i'm going to center the header rows 
so that Excel knows that these are headers, home tab, uh, alignment, and uh, center them. You might also want to wrap the text, alignment, wrapping the text, so that now you can see you know the whole thing, and even though you've got a squished up, even though they're, they're kind of squished up here, so you've got it wrapped. <laughs> All right, let's put our cursor in somewhere in the data set. I'm going to go to the insert tab, tables, and add a table as we have seen in the past. Now the dancing ants are going all the way from A1 to uh, uh, H39. So notice only two cells are necessary to, to grab this whole table. Also note that when there's missing data, like this blank piece right there, sometimes you might want to go in and put a zero there or something so that you don't have nothing in the cell because when you have nothing in the cell that could mess up uh, your tables and whatnot when you create the tables so i'm going to say uh okay so there is our table all right so we want to make a scatter uh plot now and the scatter plots are found in the insert tab and then the charts group and then we've got our dots here here's the scatters so now the question is, well, we need two sets of data. So when we were looking at the histograms, we were usually looking at you know one set of data and thinking about the midpoint of the histogram and the spread. Now we wanna take a look at the relationship uh, between two sets of data. So first, let's think about horsepower and the miles per gallon. And so then the question would be, well, do you want the horsepower on the X axis or do we want it on the Y? Do we want it on the, on the horizontal or on the vertical? The horizontal is, is, uh, is usually going to be what we would call the dependent and the vertical, the independent, although you can kind of see it the other way uh, too. We're plotting the two against each other. But so the easiest way to do this, if I want the, the horsepower on the horizontal, making it the dependent variable traditionally, I'm going to uh, copy that and I'm going to put that over here in J. So I copied the whole column. I could select the whole column like this and control C or right click and copy. I'm going to put that in J1 and right click and paste. So there we have it. I could paste it like that. So there we have our horsepower. And then I want to pick up the miles per gallon. So I'm going to pick up this one. I'm going to select the entire column putting my cursor on B, selecting the entire column. You could say control C on the keyboard or right click and copy. And then you could say control V on the keyboard or right click and paste. So there we have it. So there's our variables we want. Now, again, if I wanna put a table around uh, just these variables, I can put my cursor here and insert tab and in the tables group table. And hopefully, again, the dancing ants go all the way down to the bottom of the table. They do. I'm going to hit OK. So there is our table. So now we can sort our table. They're kind of together now. These two data sets are kind of together. So I can then sort it this way. I can say from A to Z on the horsepower or from Z to A on the horsepower. And I can take the miles per gallon and take it from A to Z or uh, Z to A. Uh, in this fashion as well. And, the, and the, so, so we can sort it in that way. And now if they have them side by side here, it's really easy for me to enter the scatter plot because now I can just simply select these two items. Now, of course, there's a couple ways you could do that. You could select the entire thing, scrolling down like this. Uh, but that, so, and then if you do that, once you enter the scatter, you don't want to be down here because then your scatter plot will be input down here and you'll have to drag it up. So you want to go all the way back up to the top. But you might want, if you have a table, you can kind of, you can click, if you click where you have the drop down, it's only selecting the data. So I could click that way and it selects the data, but really I want the whole table. So if I double click here, it selects the whole table and then I can drag that to the right which is what I want, right? I want the whole thing. So I'll include the headers in it. And as I input the, the, the table, it should be able to determine what is the header versus the data. All right, so then we're just gonna go to the insert tab. We're gonna go to the uh, charts group. We're gonna go to the dots here 
and then I'm just going to do the standard scatter. So there's the scatter. I'll pull that over to the right. And let's pull this cell to the right a bit. And I'm going to go over a bit more. And we'll make it a bit larger. And so there we have it. So let's check this thing out. So I'm going to remove the title. And so now it's going to be important to kind of list you kind of the axes titles are very important here because we've got to be determining what did it plot on the X down here versus the Y. Now you can get an idea for this because if I go to the horsepower and I sort it from Z to A, it's going to 230. So 230, clearly this side of the X is the horsepower. That's typically how it will be if you sort your data with the x axis on the left and the y on the right in the columns it'll basically automatically then create the scatter plot in the format that you want so then we can then go in here and say let's add uh the axis titles so there's these are going to be important so down here we have the horsepower notice if i click on it i'm not really inside it it doesn't really remove the the title here but if i start typing i can see it's showing up up here so if i type in horse uh power then it then it types in and i believe you can actually use a formula too i could just say this equals the horsepower from there and and then now you have a nice link so if i changed the title name or something it would change so that's probably a, a more efficient way to do this and so i could say this one equals you can see the equal sign up top the miles per gallon and so now we've got uh the miles per gallon so so there we have it pretty straightforward now if i wanted to look at or change the data set i can go into here now if i'm off of this just like all of our other charts i don't have my added tabs up top if i go into the chart now I've got the design and format tabs. If I go into the design tab, I've got the adding of the elements, the axis, the axis titles, many of these also being shown in that plus button. I've got the quick layouts here. So we've got the adjustments of the layouts. If we wanted to test out these kind of custom layouts, we've got the color changes that we can put into play. Again, we have different kind of formats of the layout here. If we wanted to pick those, if we want to switch uh, the columns, uh, switch the columns in row, and then the select data. So I want to select the data. And so this one might be a fast way sometimes to, to swap the, the data uh, over the axes. But if I go to the data here, we can see uh, the data. So now we've got the miles per gallon. And over here, if I go to the edit and go into the edit, so we have uh, the, the series name. If I, This is the X and this is the Y. So the X down here, this axis is here. So if I select this item, I could see what is in the X. If I wanted to swap them, I can. this is one place I can go to, sw to switch them. If I wanted to switch them, I can say this would be the miles per gallon on the X and, and then the horsepower on the Y. But because we put it in this format, it pulled it in properly in the proper format so that looks good the x and the y looks like what we would expect uh, and then you have your formatting tools over here as well all right so let's take a look at this side if i go into my plus button i've got the axis i've got the axis titles i've got the the chart title uh and if you have the axes the chart title might not be as important the i mean you could have a chart title, but the, the most important thing here is that you want to make sure that you're that you're putting the axis titles oftentimes because that's going to tell people what is actually happening. Whereas in the histogram and you only have one set of data, you might not need the axis titles. You could just put the put the, uh, the 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 chart title. So if you need the data labels, you can put here. Obviously, if you have a whole lot of data. This is going to be quite tedious. I'm going to add it for now just so we can kind of tie it in uh, to over here just to check it out. Uh, the error bars. So you could see, again, they, they put the little uh, bar and whiskers here. That would be could be useful if you don't have a whole lot of data. It would be not as useful if you have a whole lot. Grid lines, uh, the legend. If you have multiple sets of data, then you could put a legend in. But we don't need one because we only have you know one thing that we're comparing uh two at miles per gallon we have one 
I should say independent variable, and and then uh, the trend line. Now the trend line is something that's quite common, right? So usually when we do something like this, we're going to want to add the trend line. So that puts a, a line, an approximation through the data. Let's let's get rid of the numbers again. Those numbers that's too much. Uh, data labels, grid line. Th get rid of those. Okay. So there's so now we've got this line through the data. Now oftentimes we're going to want that line to be a, a little bit more uh, defined. So if I, I go, I could double click on that line, or I could go on into the more detail from the plus button, and that gives us our our information over here. So notice we have a linear line. That's usually what we want. You could you could test out the the different you know line shapes here that might fit your data more uh, precisely. And the one of the ideas here, of course, is to be is to say what I'd like to have is a line that that I can have a function for, right? I want to have I want to it'd be nice to have a, a line that I can create a a function for that fits the data, so that so that then you can do it's easier to do mathematical kind of approximations if you have uh, a line, a straight line would be the easiest one, but some kind of line that you can have a mathematical equation for would be useful sometimes. Now, sometimes it's nice to actually have the equation. So if down here it says display equation. So if I go into the equation, that gives us our, our equation for the line. So I'll make that a little bit larger so you can kind of check it out. Let's go up top and say that I'm gonna, I'm gonna increase the size of that thing. So, and obviously again, if we have the equation for the line, then we can kind of try to use that equation to to make approximations and so on even though the line is just an approximated line just basically going through the the middle of the data to try to look at a trend uh through it so if i go into that line again the other way you can get into that line is hit the plus button and then in the trends i got that linear linear line and i want to open it back up again so let's actually go down here to more options so so now i've got that in place now if i go to this bucket on the left sometimes i would like to see that line as a different color quite often let's make it red which will make it stand out and then uh is that the color of the line didn't turn red let's go to red here on the line and then here we've got the styles of the line i'd like to make it an actual line so now I've got a line instead of the dots. So there we have it. That's some of the main items that we would be adding. Now, just to get an idea of this, if we have the horsepower here, remember this is kind of the independent variable and what you would expect then as the horsepower goes up, the miles per gallon goes down, which is kind of what we see here, right? So we're gonna say that as the horsepower, if I sort this from A to Z is low, so lower horsepower between 40 and like 60 over here. So, so horsepower is going up from 40 to 60. If I look at the miles uh, per gallon related to that, we, we start to go down, right? So it's starting to trend down as the horsepower goes up, which is kind of what you would expect in general. And then as you get the horsepower up to like 100, then the miles per gallon you know, are going down. And then as you increase the horsepower, the miles per gallon are going down. And then when you get way out here to really high horsepower, so if I reverse this from uh, Z to A, and I'm, and I'm looking at like the 230 plot over here, then you can see for, for some reason, the miles per gallon is actually a little bit higher than some of the ones prior to that. And, and you could start to look at something like this and say, well, why would that be the case, for example? And I don't really know, right? Because then you'd have to get into the analysis part of it. This is just looking at the relationship of the data. But if I was to guess, if you would come up with a hypothesis, you might say, well, maybe, you know, these cars are being driven on the road where there's a lot of stop and go on the freeway and whatnot, where higher horsepower cars are not gonna be quite as as efficient so if you're driving a really high horsepower car around here and this range on the fr you know not on the freeway but stop and go traffic you're probably going to be much less efficient on how far you're going to go but maybe if people have really super sports powery cars they only drive them when they can actually 
go at a de decent speed and not stop and go. And in that case, maybe the horsepower wouldn't be uh, such a bad issue. It's usually the stop and go. But, you know, that's just a guess. Then you can get into the analysis on, on, the, on what's the cause. Now, note that if you wanted to make the same graph and say, hey, look, I don't want to pull the data over. I want to just make it from this data set. So I can, I can select the data this way. I can go to the horsepower and I can go to the miles uh, per gallon, right? I could select these two data sets. And so I've got them selected all the way down. Uh, notice this one is selected. I just want the data in the table. So sometimes that could be a little bit difficult to do. I could say I want then Let's try the keyboard method. One way you could do this, by the way, you could select the whole thing and drag all the way down like this, just to make sure you're getting the whole data set and not going like to the whole column. And then you hold control down and then I can put my cursor here and I can select these non adjacent columns and select them. So that's the most intuitive way. You still need the keyboard to do it. And then you can insert that way. Another way you might try is you could put your cursor let's say i put my cursor here and i use the keyboard holding down control and shift and then down arrow this usually takes you to the bottom of the data set but because i'm scrolling down uh that you, you have these blank spots here it didn't take me all the way to the bottom it got stopped at the blank so i'm going to do it again control shift down control shift down until i get to the bottom of the data and that's why those blank spots uh, are problematic in a data set and then to get back up to the top, I'm going to select, I'm going to hold down control and the backspace. Now I'm back up at the top. I'm going to hold down control to get back to the miles per gallon. So now I have two non-adjacent cells selected. Now I'm holding control shift again and the down arrow. So now it's selected the whole data down to here. Now I don't want to be at the bottom when I insert the scatter plot or else it's going to insert it way down here at 395 so I want to hold down control backspace taking me back up to the top all right so now let's do it again I'm going to go to the insert tab we're going to go to the charts and let's do another scatter plot uh not that one this one inserting it and then so there we have uh created it again so boom and there we have it and it actually selected i believe going the so well no it's opposite now see now you've got now you've got the horsepower uh over here and i'd like to switch the 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 rows right because and why did it do that because i had the miles per gallon on the left so i want to switch now the x and y's so there's a shortcut kind of thing up top. So if I go into here and I and I go into the data, it's got this switch right there, but it's not letting me do it because of the maximum number of data series. So I'm just going to do it manually. I'm going to go in and say, all right, let's go to the data data. And I'm going to look at the data in the edit. And now you can see your X and Y data. So here's your X data. If I click in it, it's the miles per gallon. I want it to be the horsepower. So I'm going to delete what's in there. You could put an equals and then select the item or you can select this thing and then click over here where you want it to go. I'm going to try to select the data, putting my cursor where I have the arrow drop down. So it selects that data set. And then I'm going to select this again and that'll allow me to see the whole box. And then in the Y, I'm going to do the same thing, delete the Y and then click this item to select the series I want, which is going to be the miles per gallon. I'm going to put my cursor where I hear, see that arrow, select, and then there we have it. I'll click this again. So now I've switched the X and the Y. I can say, okay, and okay. So now we have the same basic uh, scatter plot. And what we would typically want to do is hit the plus button and we're gonna say title axes. I'll do this quicker because we've seen this before. This is gonna be equal to the horsepower. So I'm gonna do it this way this time. I'm gonna say equals horsepower. You can see the, the table up top. So now if I change the headers, it'll change automatically. Axis title down here is, is, I'm sorry, that was the wrong one. Wait a second. This one should be the miles per gallon. And this one, should be the horsepower now i lost that one this one should be equal to the power of the horse 
the power of the horse. And then of course we can add our regression line in the same fashion, add in the trend line. And then I wanna look at linear, more options. But I can go to, I can add the equation if I want, boom, the bucket. And then I'd like to make it a line and red. You also have this glowing, this glow thing over here that I, I, I think I put on the example. If you wanted to go into here, they've got some neat kind of shade. And then uh, the glow is kind of interesting. So they've got these default glow settings. So then if you wanted that dotted line uh, that's not so pronounced so that you could still see the other dots in there maybe instead of a linear, but then you add that glow to it then that lets it lets it uh, stand out or or maybe you have just a blue line with a bit of a glow to it so it kind of stands out but doesn't cover anything else up all right let's do the same thing comparing now miles per gallon as i'm going to make a skinny j put in my curse between uh j i and j or skinny i and so there we have it a skinny i because i want to be skinny and so I kind of say, and then we're going to say, let's do the same for the miles per gallon as uh, the independent variable, the X axis and the acceleration. So I'm going to do this one faster. So I'm just going to take this whole column, right click and copy. And the easy way to do this is we're just going to put our columns of data side by side over here. I'm just going to right click and paste. So there's our miles per gallon and then acceleration. So I'm gonna put my cursor here, right click and copy, and put my cursor in Z, right click and paste. Okay, and then I'm gonna select uh, the entire thing, putting my cursor in here, insert. I'm gonna to go to the tables tab, insert a table and say, okay. So it looks like it got the table all the way down. Looks like properly allocated table. I can sort now by miles per gallon, Z to A, or A to Z, Z to A, Z to A, or now I can sort this way as well. And now if I want to insert a scatter, I could select this whole thing. Maybe I want the titles in there too. If I scroll down, you gotta be careful that it doesn't select the entire things so sometimes it might be easier to like select these two control shift and then down and then control backspace so that we got the data properly selected and then insert tab and uh, charts and we want to go to the scatter and scatter boom so now we've got our our trend so I'm going to delete this and then we got to say, okay, which way are the X's and Y's going? Because I lined them up this way, I would expect this to be the X, right? This would be the X side. You kind of check by looking at the bottom and top. So it goes from zero up to 50. So if I sort this from Z to A, you're like, all right, it goes up to 50. That kind of makes sense. This one only goes up to 30. If I sort this from Z to A, that kind of makes sense. So it looks like this one is the miles per gallon which is what we would expect i'm going to hit the uh, plus button here and say that i want axis titles put my cursor in the axis title equals the miles per gallon no this one is the acceleration and then this one equals the miles per gallon we can add a trend line so now this one is trending upwards. You can see that was what I was trying to get a trend line going the other way. This one trending down, this one's trending up. We're gonna say uh, plus button trend line. I want a linear trend line, more options. And then I could say that I would like to see a formula for it. So let me check out the formula. There's our formula. Can make that a little bit larger, home tab on the formula, increasing the size of it, pulling it up somewhere so we can actually see it. And then back to this trend line. And let's say that we want to make it, uh, let's, say, let's say we just wanna make it glow, right? If I leave it at that same like color, but then I go down here and say, and say, let's go to the glow 
and give it that that yellow glow so now you now you've got that trend line that's not really covering anything up but you can still kind of see it and maybe i'll do a different glow we saw yellow before let's do an orange so there we have that and so so there's that relationship now let's build this one more time but this time taking the information from the table on the left so now i'm going to go to the table and i'm going to select miles per gallon so I'm going to try to do the easiest way to select these two columns at the same time. The most intuitive way is to put your cursor here and drag all the way down because you want to make sure that you, you select all of the data and not the entire column. But I think the faster way when you have a lot of data, I'm going to close this out, is to put your cursor here, control shift down, taking you to the bottom of the data, holding control backspace, taking you back up, then I'm holding control down to select the other cell. So I have non-adjacent cells, cells that are not next to each other selected at the same time. And then holding control shift and down to, to get the two columns. You might also try, by the way, I'm going to go control backspace, putting your cursor just on this one and then this holding control and this one. So now I've got these two non-adjacent cells by holding control and then hold down control shift and down, but then it really only hits the second one. So you can't then control backspace. I'm gonna put my cursor here and then control shift down to get both of them holding control backspace. All right, so you can experiment with different ways to do that. But going back up, we're gonna to go to the insert tab the the charts and make the good old scatter and before you enter the scatter by the way you might want to position where you want it to go right so i might try to kind of move over here even though i still have those other ones selected so that the scatter hopefully will be generated somewhere over here right so i can go insert and then charts and then give me the scatter and so now it's i can just drag it right here so it kind of put it in the middle of the screen where i'm currently viewing you know which is nice and so then i can just do my standard thing here i'll do it fast because we've done it a few times and we're running long on time so we're going to say that uh, let's add some axes so the chart uh title the axis titles so this is going to be equal to and i'm going to say the miles per gallon and then this axis scrolling to the right this axis is equal to we're going to say the acceleration acceleration going back to the right and then we can add a trend line if we so choose trend line linear more options we want this to be we want to see the formulae down here give me the formulae there it is let's make it larger home tab I got to be selected on it home tab font group increasing the font size grabbing it pulling it up a bit clicking on that trend line so now i have the trend line information on the right and i'll go to the bucket and this time let's change the color of the trend line to like orange maybe and then make it glow middle tab glowing it's nice when stuff glows and it's gr the green glow, green and blue. Do, I think that's not good for color blindness, is it? I don't know, I don't know what I'm talking about. And let's make it, the, the, I did orange before. Well, we'll just do the same. So I'm gonna close that out. So that's the general general idea of uh, of the scatters.